Hey everyone, and welcome back to Byte of Linux. So, the news is final. Ubuntu 17.04 Zesty Zappis has been released. Now, there are two things I want to mention before I start reviewing it. And the first is that Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, has dropped the Unity project. So that means that any future Ubuntu releases, like Ubuntu 17.10 and Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, will use the GNOME desktop environment instead of Unity. And that makes sense because, I mean, Ubuntu originally used GNOME, and Unity is a fork of the GNOME project. And the second thing is that if you look at the pattern in the naming of each Ubuntu release, you'll see that they start with the first letters of the alphabet, so and then it goes down the list. So here you have D, E, F, G, and it keeps going down, and the current release is Zesty Zappis, and that's Z. So I wonder what's going to happen next, because there are no other letters after Z, <laughs> so they might go back to the beginning of the alphabet, or use something else instead of animals to name it. Okay, so you can see that I have installed Ubuntu 17.04 on my computer here, and let me just show you my details. Here you can see that it's in fact Ubuntu 17.04, just run this, and yep, the codename is Zesty Zappis. So let me start off the video by showing you some of the new features in this release. Okay, so the first main feature is that Ubuntu now uses a swap file instead of an entire swap partition. So if we open up Gparted, we can see here that there's only one partition, and that is the root partition. There's nothing else, no swap or anything like that. So let's go back to our file manager and go over to our root partition, and here you can see that there is, in fact, a swap file here. And this holds all the information for swap. And I'm not really sure why they did this. I guess because most computers have a lot of RAM now, and swap is not needed as much, but it's still necessary, which is why they still keep a file here. Now, of course, when you have a new release coming in like this, all the packages that are used by it also get updated. So if we go into our terminal and view the current Linux kernel version, we will see that it is 4.10. Now on top of the kernel, we also have application updates. So if we go into LibreOffice, the whole suite is now updated to version 5.3. All GNOME applications are updated to 3.24. The calendar app now has some new updates, which include a weak view. And gconf is no longer installed by default because you can just use G settings and you can tweak all the things that gconf can. So another big thing that people are always talking about is the desktop environment. So we know that GNOME is going to be used in the future releases, but how about this release? Well, Unity 7 is still the default desktop environment, but the new Unity 8 is also included. And to use that instead of 7, you can log out and click on this little Ubuntu icon here and select Unity 8. And of course, you can just log in the same way you would. And then when it boots up, you will have the new Unity 8 desktop. So of course you have to enter in your password again. And here it is. So it does look a little bit different. It's kind of more focused towards a kind of mobile view instead of desktop. And it has its advantages and disadvantages. Now I'm not going to go into a review of Unity 8 right now. You can see those elsewhere. But it is nice to have both options. So the final update that came with this release is driverless printing. So you can connect to your printer, such as an Apple AirPrint printer, without installing a driver. 
and Canonical says it is now as easy as connecting a USB stick, which sounds awesome to me because drivers are always a hassle to install and set up. Now in addition to all of these new updates, there are also a few minor bug fixes, and of course the wallpaper has changed. Still looks really similar, but a little bit different. And now let me do the review part of the video. So to be honest, there really isn't much to say about this release. I mean, it's really polished. Very little bugs for me. I mean, the animations could be worked on a little bit. I do feel like they are sometimes buggy, but that's no big deal. But and I haven't experienced these bugs, but it is stated on the release's website that there are a few more bugs. So these include when installing Ubuntu, you have some partitioning errors that you can encounter. When upgrading, some modules are not correctly built and installed. And when using the software app, some third-party .deb Debian files are not installable. So those are pretty minor, not too big of a deal, but it's still, of course, not a perfect distribution for everyone. Okay everyone, that's going to wrap up this video. I know it was a rather short one, but there really wasn't much to say. It is a very polished one, has very little bugs, and is overall well-rounded. So if you're thinking about upgrading, make sure to upgrade, as you will also be content with this release. And I'm also kind of interested about the future of Ubuntu as, you know, we're at the end of the line with the names and they're moving to GNOME now. But at least for now with this release, it is very stable. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome Linux distribution reviews and more. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.